when um, y you read stuff about um, the sort of Northern Britonic kingdoms, the Picts get a lot of attention because they've sort of got this, they've sort of survived in um, popular, popular culture, popular memory, um, lots of, I mean, yeah, quite a few Scottish people I've uh, known sort of have this idea of being descended from the Picts, you know, whether or not that's um, uh, historically accurate, but, you know, they've sort of been, a, been adopted in some way. Um, so scholarship on it tends to focus a lot on the Picts and thinks of the kingdom of Outclut, the kingdom of Strathclyde, uh, it's the kingdom of Outclut at this time, um, as in the Picts' shadow. But what I was looking at is, um, I think the evidence for um, the interactions between Outclut and Pickland seems to tip in the favour of Outclut, because if you, the Pictish, um, the Pictish royal line as it were if we can call such a thing the pictish kings they seem to come from lots of different external dynasties they always seem to be provided by an external dynasty and throughout the seventh century um they are very regularly supplied by the kingdom of outclut particularly the dynasty of um this one figure called um nathan map um, now, Nathan Mac Gwythno, um lived in the late 6th century, um, and he he was a king of Altclut, but also his um, reign correlates with a name in the Pictish king lists called um, Nectu Nepos Oeb, um, which again, I'm probably saying horribly wrong. So if we sort of think of the two as the same pe person, which I think is very plausible, um, this Nathan ruled both Outclut and Pickland at the same time. And then you get lots of Pictish kings descended from Nathan. Well, I say lots of. the. Um, there's one in particular, um, Brede Mac, um, Mac Belly. He's um, one of the most famous Pictish kings. Um, he was the one who won the... Um, Battle of Nectanismir in 685, which was against the Northumbrians. And that's kind of responsible for breaking Northumbrian hold over Pickland and over um, sort of north of England. Um, and so he's the grandson of Nathan Map Gwythno, and his father, uh, Belly, um, was also a king of Outclut. So you've got these very powerful Pictish kings who are kind of supplied by Altclut. And so I think my fan theory for the reason um, Altclut survived the seventh century is because they were so closely tied to Pickland um, and sort of and through that became very powerful. I think it, I think they were probably the most powerful um, North Britonic kingdom throughout the seventh century because of their control of Pickland. That's absolutely fascinating, and I had no idea that they they'd supplied so many kings from the Northumbrian side. I I know that there were a few Northumbrian candidates that became became king in in Pickland as well, and that I think one of the and I can't remember which one, but one of the Northumbrians marries a, a Pictish queen as well, and then supplies the kings. But it's very interesting that they kind of get their king from an external place, and if they're getting many of their kings from Strathclyde, then in a way it means that Strathclyde and Pickland are politically intertwined, especially as if, as you say, with that individual, was it uh, Mathan, the, the name yes. of the king? That if he's ruled, ruling both at once, then you've got, you know, the political power and the manpower of both to, to back yourself up. Yeah. Is uh, there much? Yes. Yeah, please. I was, I was just going to say, oh, and also the... Um... Actually, the Northumbrian king that you mentioned, um, that's uh, Ian, Ian Frith of Bernicia. Um, yes. His, yeah, it was his son, um, Talorgan, um, or Talorcan, I don't know how to say it. Um, oh, who... me neither. It's Pictish, <laughs> it's all correct, it's fine. We don't know how to say it, so it's fine. <laughs> who knows? Um, but yeah, so he was the one who became um, a Pictish king. But actually, Ian Frith um, married, we think he married a Pictish um, princess while, while in exile. But I kind of think that, um, so through my research, I noticed that one scholar, um, James Fraser, thinks that it was likely that Aamfrith took refuge 
with a southern Pictish um, ruler um, because Tolokan is active in the southern Pickland area. And actually it's southern Pickland that Nathan Mapguidno seems to be active in. So I kind of, uh, obviously th this gets a little bit tinfoil hatty, but I think that um, Aamfrith was actually hosted in the um, court of Nathan Mapguidno who was both a Pictish king and an Outclut king. So ah. the Outclut dynasty really have their fingers in a lot of pies, thanks to Nathan. That's a, so in the case of Southern Pictish Kingdom, we're reading Strathclyde, maybe? Um, not exactly. It is separate. But mm. I think for the 7th century, their dynasties are so intertwined um, that it's reasonable to almost not quite but almost think of their dynasties as interchangeable and it's only really after Brithe again this is sort of a, my fan my fan theory but um I think it's only really after um Brithe Map uh Brithe Map Belly that Pickland really became a force to be reckoned with in its own right and that's it's pretty much immediately after Brithe's death that the dynasty of Nathan lose their grip on um, Pickland, and the uh, the dull um, the Gaelic rulers um, uh, Brithe Macdaile and Nectan Macdaile get their hands on Pickland, and then the balance of power shifts from it, the Kingdom of Strathclyde being the one sort of pulling the strings and supplying the kings in Pickland to the, the Dol Reardons having that prominent position. Love the rhyme, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you noticed. I was very tempted to say something, but I thought <laughs> I'll let it go. I'll let it go. But no, I'm glad you noticed. But that is interesting. And how did that politically, did that have a, a sort of aftermath for the Kingdom of Strathclyde now that they'd lost that influence in Pickland? Do we start to see that they're starting to lose territory to the Northumbrians or the, the Dal Riadans at all? Or do they manage to hold their own, but in a more limited fashion? I think they still manage to hold their own. Um, it's really the seventh century that's their, their time to shine. Um, I do say there's a lot of evidence for them supplying Pictish kings. All the evidence is very, very obscure and in some ways requires, you know, stacking a house of cards on a house of cards um but i do think there is definitely grounds for saying that a lot of their kings were supplied by outclut at first but yes after the um after the seventh century they never quite reached that peak but remember by this point they'd outlasted the other north Bretonic kingdoms so they'd managed to get through the seventh century um and so after which is that, an achievement for yeah. a north Bretonic kingdom <laughs> let's not forget so I feel like once once they got over that century, they could cling on. They could kind of, you know, breathe a, breathe a, a breath and yeah. sit back and say, we did it, boys. You know, it's over. It's fine. You know, roll on the 8th century. Things will be looking up from here. Yeah, I mean, we talk about 2020. They had a whole century. <laughs> a whole century, bless them.